Today I'm going to answer the question, is the Elden Ring DLC worth it? And the answer is 100% yes. It's so good. Now, I'm going to stay in this little graveyard area at the beginning to avoid spoilers. So if you're trying to avoid spoilers, you're not going to get any here. Apart from the visuals of this. Look how pretty it looks. It's absolutely amazing looking. I can't wait to go to every area because obviously... When it comes to other ring games or from software games, I mean, when you can see something in the distance, you can travel there at some point. It's going to be brilliant. And apparently it's going to be really, really difficult too. And I can't wait. From software games have always been known to have DLCs that expand the game massively. And this DLC has done the same thing as that. I mean, the Dark Souls 2 DLC, for example, was renowned as the best DLC in a From Software game. And I think this DLC might actually trump that. Now, I haven't obviously played it all yet, so I don't know. It doesn't have the night, as far as I know yet, uh, that Dark Souls 2 added. I don't know if you guys remember that fight. And, oh man, this I think it was the Fade Night, by the way, if anyone's wondering which one I'm talking about. And this is probably going to add some unique bosses as well. That is going to be amazing. And I can't wait. I'm a big fan of one versus one boss fights in video games. In from software games, I should specify. And because of that, I really hope that there is like a really large amount of one versus one fights in here. Oh my god. Now, apparently, without giving away too much, in case you're trying to avoid spoilers, as I said... There's tons of new weapons. There's tons of new styles of weapons. I think that the game has also added some more traditional weaponry as well. Like when we were playing Dark Souls 3, for example, and you have something that scales amazing with decks, just as an example, and you don't really have that traditional kind of scaling in Elden Ring as much because of all the bleed and poison and ice and all that. That just kind of means that we're going to have some traditional style weapons. I can't wait to see what kind of weapons those are. I mean, I've been using this Uchi Katana the entire time I've been playing Elden Ring. Not the entire time across all characters, but for this character. And I haven't found anything that's actually more stylistic for me, like more Dex arc than this. Because you could put anything onto it. You could put Frost onto it. You could put uh, Bleed onto it and... As you can see, I'm actually doing quite good damage against the enemies here. So the Uchi Katana seems to be a good weapon to start off the DLC with. One of the downsides of the DLC is the boss that you have to kill in order to access it. And that boss is quite difficult. Now, don't forget that there are guides out there to show you how to fight the boss. Because you can actually make that boss a lot easier. Uh, of course, the boss being Moog, the Blood Omen. And I actually think if you follow a guide, you could probably kill Moog no problem. I didn't have any trouble with it the second time. When I first played the game, I had a lot of trouble with him because I wasn't ready for his abilities. Another thing you can do, of course, is use the Mimic Ash, which is going to have two of you pretty much versus him, which makes the fight a lot easier. And another thing is the community is currently helping players get past that boss in order to allow them to access the DLC. So put down your summon sign and people will come and help you. I love the Souls community for that reason. What other community would do something like that where you have literally hundreds of people waiting outside that boss's room specifically to help people access the new DLC. It's brilliant. They recommend level 120 for the DLC. I have been roughly having an okay time at level 150. I think anywhere between 140 to 150 is probably a better option than 120, which is recommended because you don't want it to be overly difficult. You don't want to get your ass kicked constantly by everything here. I've been doing really good damage to the starter enemies, of course, but once you start getting into it, it's supposed to get really, really difficult. Another problem people have is the price. Now, I am... A really cheap person myself i don't like spending this much money on full games that remind dlcs 40 euro for a dlc they are after adding so much to the game from this dlc i think it is worth the price at full i don't think you have to wait for a sale 
I had to buy the DLC myself as well, by the way. I didn't go off and get a review copy or anything like that. And I think I'm happy with the 40 euro. I don't think there's any problem there. I would say something if it was one of those DLCs that barely adds anything. And then you're they're still expecting you to pay 40 to 60 euro for it. So I think you're happy enough with 40. Of course, you can wait till it goes on sale. I'm not sure how often Elden Ring goes on sale personally. I haven't been keeping up to date with that. And I think when it comes to sales of the DLC, you're probably going to be waiting about at least six months. Maybe the Christmas sale will have it. So we'll literally be waiting till the end of the year for a sale on it. Of course, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about the DLC and the price of it. By the way, while I was trying to focus on gaming and yapping at the same time, I managed to die. So that's brilliant. So while I'm on the way back to get my runes, I'm going to ask you guys about what you think of the price. I noticed that the review score for this is only 93% and that's on day one. These reviews tend to go down rather than up after a few days. So I'm guessing the DLC is going to hit around the 90% mark, which is still really good, but I'm very surprised that it hasn't got more than that, obviously. And it was this guy over here who killed me. He is really, really dangerous. And yeah, so I wonder like, why does it only have 90%? Now, I did look at some of the reviews and a lot of those reviews were based around, around the game having performance issues. I haven't had any performance issues myself, but I have a pretty good PC. Maybe the performance issues are happening on people who have lesser quality PCs or less powerful PCs. And they're still trying to play this game on the highest settings, for example. I mean, I don't think I'm on the highest settings personally. I'm on 60 FPS. I'm not even sure. Can you put this game onto 160 FPS? And it's running smoothly as, as anything for me. It's actually running smoother than the normal game, which tends to bug out a little bit for me, unfortunately. So I'm not 100% sure. I've never actually hit one of these things before, so I'm not sure what they are. Look at that face. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Uh, this is probably me making a big mistake right here by trying to hit this thing. Let's see how many runes we get. And 1100. Yeah, that's not too bad, I suppose. I could put on some extra runes from that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today's video. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of the game. Let me know what you think of DLC. If you need any help with anything, let me know. I'm going to try and make some guides on how to do things in the DLC. That way you'll be able to get through all of the difficulties of it and yeah let me know as i said what you think of elden ring itself and elden ring dlc but for now have a nice day